Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis is facing more criticism for sending migrants to Martha's Vineyard. It's the latest in a series of moves by Republican governors to send people seeking asylum into Democratic-led sanctuary cities. CBS 2's Jasmine Veal tells you where they are headed next. The migrants are now headed to a military base in Massachusetts. Some are calling this a political stunt by the Florida governor. Venezuelan migrants, some as young as four, voluntarily boarded buses on Martha's Vineyard, headed to a new shelter at Joint Base Cape Cod. I hope they feel exceptionally loved. They're in my heart forever. Florida's Republican governor, Ron DeSantis, sent the asylum seekers to the Massachusetts summer retreat Wednesday, demanding President Biden do more to secure the border. They went from Texas to Florida to Martha's Vineyard in the flight. There's also going to be buses and there will likely be more flights. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom says he is calling on the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate. Those migrants who use this pause. What uh, Ron DeSantis is doing is a disgrace. It's almost monstrous. And in a fiery presser from Orlando, faith and immigrant leaders fired back, calling the move a cruel political stunt. What is the problem? The whole United States is supposed to be a sanctuary country. Governor, you need to repent. The governor of Massachusetts says as many as 125 National Guard members will help with the relief effort in Cape Cod, where migrants will be given clothing, food, and medical care. Volunteers and residents stepped up to help the migrants on the venue, many of whom told translators they made the journey for their life. Behind, I left half of me, more than half of me, because he left his son. Civil rights attorneys tell CBS News the migrants were misled about where they were headed and promised work. These are the kinds of tactics we see from smugglers in places like Mexico and Guatemala. The White House is calling on Republicans to support President Biden's immigration reform package to help immigrants legally enter the U.S. So far, Texas and Arizona have sent at least 295 buses with approximately 13,000 migrants to D.C., New York, and Chicago. And according to statistics provided to CBS News, the operations have cost Texas more than $12 million dollars in Arizona over a got so bad yesterday, CNN actually cut away from the festivities on the South Lawn to talk about the stock market. And when you look at the numbers, you know, there's no way things are going to be better between now and the midterms. And that's why they had a victory party yesterday with the midterms. When you look at the numbers, look, gas is up close to 26 percent, electricity up to 16 percent. That is the largest 12 month increase since 1981. Utilities, we know you can't pay them. That's up, a killer. Up about 20 percent. And look at that last number. Winners coming. Fuel oil is up close to 70 percent. And that is going to just make this winter. Gas prices have gone down, but the other energy costs that you just saw there on your screen, like electricity.
electricity and natural gas, they have increased. So it's basically offset that relief that you're feeling at the pump. It's just not in your face like it is when, it, when it's the gas the gas station because you're driving down the street and you see those numbers in your face. But then you get that electric bill at the end of the month and it's sky high. Electricity in August up 15.8% compared to last year. It's the biggest 12 month increase, like you said, since 1981. U.S. families have fallen behind on their utility bills and they owe a collective $16 billion. But don't worry, James Taylor's here to sing us into safety and security. He was there at the The window. last time we were asked uh, to bring James Taylor out was after the bombing in France when the President Obama at the time decided to watch football instead of go and express solidarity. But they sent James Taylor and John Kerry to embarrass us internationally. So when in doubt, we allowed James Taylor to sing fire and rain. Here's the President. The stock market doesn't necessarily reflect the state of the economy, as you well know. And the economy's still strong, unemployment's low, jobs are up, manufacturing's good. So I think it's, uh, I think we're going to be fine. Are you worried about the inflation number, though, sir? No, I'm not, because we're talking about one-tenth to one percent. And, you know, anyway, thank you. Yeah, it's at 8.3 percent overall, one-tenth to one percent, but you didn't count the fact to we at 8.3 percent. But for some reason, the president's calculus is, let's keep spending. That's the problem with past the ways in which we got inflation down in the past. We didn't spend like drunken sailors. Well, when you look at the last, uh, we're in Federal Reserve in San Francisco, the last quarter of the last year, the inflation rate was about 6%. that they have done all this spending. And the autocrat's playbook is this. Human beings, especially black and brown human beings, can be very effectively and explicitly used as pawns to make a political point, to own the elites, to own the globalists. Does that remind you of anything else? Maybe something we're seeing here on the state level in the United States? On Wednesday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis became the third governor to use taxpayer dollars to transport migrants and asylum seekers from Republican states to liberal cities like New York and D.C. and Chicago, to really stick it to Biden and the liberal elites and their cities that already enjoy large, diverse immigrant populations. To make some kind of point, DeSantis sent nearly 50 migrants on planes to Martha's Vineyard without informing any local authorities that plane loads of people who would be housing and food and care were on their way. He did alert Fox News, though, and he hired a videographer. And by the way, these migrants were lured there from San Antonio, Texas, not Florida. The plane made a pit stop in Florida, though, on the way to Martha's Vineyard. The migrants were misled with false promises of expedited work and jobs and housing and other services. Some were reportedly offered $50 gift cards. Some were lied to about where exactly they were even going and what to expect when they actually arrived. One migrant said a woman named Perla even paid him to help fill the flight to Martha's Vineyard. At least one migrant told NBC she thought she was being flown to Boston. As of today, migrants who wanted to go to the mainland for housing, which Martha's Vineyard does not have much of, they have arrived at a military base in Cape Cod thanks to the governor of Massachusetts. But here is what Governor DeSantis said privately last week to a room full of top Republican donors. The Washington Post reports that in a 51-minute speech, he told hundreds of donors, quote, I do have this money. I want to be helpful. Maybe we'll go to Texas and help. Maybe we'll send to Chicago, Hollywood, Martha's Vineyard. Who knows? The remarks were full of grievance and harping on culture wars and claims that the Libs have been, quote, winning this fight, making Republicans and people like DeSantis look like second-class citizens. He went on to say, quote, we're not just arguing about tax rates. We're not just arguing about normal policies. You know, we're arguing about whether people that dissent from leftist ideology should have any voice in our government, in society at all, of liberals, DeSanta said. And they've been winning this fight for, I would say, the last five or ten years. All the grievance, all the vengeance, it sure sounds a lot like Lukashenko. 
by the way, this plan, at least here in the U.S., was first dreamed up back in 2019 by the most grievance-filled anti-immigrant politicians of them all. Former White House immigration advisor Stephen Miller and the Trump administration immigration advisor Stephen Miller originally floated such a plan. Away, the DeSantis is getting closer than that. Over the summer, a University of New Hampshire poll of likely Republican primary voters in the state put DeSantis at 39% 
to Trump's 37% in the Granite State, which was a major change from where the race was in just the fall of 2021, when a UNH poll showed Trump with 43% to DeSantis's 18%. Now, as DeSantis' star has risen, Trump has grown increasingly dismissive of it. I don't think I will say so. Uh, because I don't see that if I if I did it. I don't see that. I think most people would drop out. I think he would drop out. And if I faced him, I'd beat him like I would beat everyone else, frankly. But behind the scenes, Trump was I'm clearly not aware of and bothered by the Santa's tribes. To, to the point where there was some discussion that the former president might announce his 2024 vote before the 2024 election. And no reason to jump on the Santa's now, the search of Mar-a-Lago in August, tied to Trump's retention of classified documents after leaving the White House, has seemingly changed that calculus somewhat, with the GOP base solidifying behind Trump and the former president feeling less pressure to make up his mind on the Senate. Nevertheless, the same is rapid rise is more than the But it appears to be all right. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson's site. Happy Friday. If there's one thing we have learned about the people who make the rules, it's that they have no intention of following them. Any of them. Ever. Ever. They command you to wear a mask as you jog alone in the park while they head to dinner barefaced at the French Laundry. That happened. They harangue you at the carbon footprint of your lawnmower as they fly to Aspen on their private jets. You see that every day. 
How many members of Congress who voted to expand the police powers of the IRS don't pay their own taxes? More than a few. How many politicians who firmly support gun control have armed bodyguards that you pay for? Well, let's see every single one. We could go on and on and on. Whatever they're demanding that you do this week, you can be dead certain they are not doing it themselves. Everyone notices this, it enrages people, but it's often misinterpreted. People say this is hypocrisy, but it's not. It it's criminal. When Nancy Pelosi walks into her hair and a mask with a hundred and a it's not because she forgot to pray. No, she knows exactly what she's doing. Nancy Pelosi is running her position in the social order. Nancy Pelosi is in charge. You are not. Nancy Pelosi is in charge. You are not. Nancy Pelosi is in charge. Another word for this is a caste system. You it's an interesting word for caste system. Caste system is the most of our immigrants. But it's the opposite of the traditional American system, which was imperfect egalitarianism. In the old American, every citizen was considered equal under the law, all in the eyes of God. Everybody had to follow the same rules. Nobody 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 Citizenship implies a certain rights, rights that politicians cannot under any circumstances think of because they did not bestow the first major appointment. But the people running our country no longer acknowledge this, they do not believe in any of their rights, nor do they believe in the following section. You may remember how this is here. A couple of years ago, these old fashioned souls dared to say that all lives matter, which they certainly do. The people in charge do it. They don't believe in all lives matter. In their view, some animals are more cool than others. It's hard to think of a news story in recent memory that illustrates this phenomenon as clearly as what is happening in my opinion. Two nights ago, Governor Roger Sanders of Florida generously sent a plane load of 50 illegal aliens to the Venezuela, the Dominion, which is a small, famously affluent island off the coast of Massachusetts. Martin Sanders has everything they ever want in the world except racial diversity. The island is whiter than a Swedish bluegrass festival. And DeSantis will try to help. Under normal circumstances, the residents of Montana would have no choice but to smile and say thank you to the When government officials send you the blessed gift of diverse immigrants to refugees, you must accept. That's the rule. It doesn't matter how disruptive these people are, it's irrelevant how much they're costing you for them, or how dramatic your quality of life is. Yeah. 
Rice Krispies. Money. Decided to wait till now. So no one said that they always thought of that. This seems like a nice place. The food is garbage. It's less healthy than the crap we eat in Crockett. So the Venezuelans may have gotten a hint that he weren't really welcome, but it was hard to know. The community seemed to be rallying behind them. But then, if there was any doubt in the morning, it was gone by afternoon because the message changed very quickly. And the new message was, get the hell out of here, brown people. The difficult challenges are... Uh, we have, at some point in time, they have to move to somewhere else, right? We, we cannot, we don't have the services to take care of 50 immigrants, um, and we, we certainly don't have housing. We're in a housing crisis as we are on this island, and so we, we don't, we can't house everyone here that lives here and works here. We don't have housing for 50 more people. <laughs> We don't have housing for 50 more people. Says the lady on an island that literally has more than 100,000 empty beds at that exact moment. Because it's a seasonal place. And more than 100,000 seasonal residents are gone. So effectively, Martha's Vineyard was the largest dormitory in the United States. But no, there's a housing crisis. At some point, they're going to have to leave, meaning in like eight minutes max. So there was a guy who's the leader of a nonprofit group who stepped up to help the refugees, and he had a different take. He said the problem wasn't the housing at all, it was the migrants. And we're quoting him. It's like me taking my trash out and just driving to different areas where I live and throwing my trash there. This man told NBC News. Oh, they're trash. They're human garbage. They're not even real. They have no souls. Do they have souls, Venezuelans? Do refugees have souls? I don't know. There's like trash. Someone dumped them on the front lawn. Let's give them Fruit Loops and get them out of here. Yeah. Call the truck. Have them hauled away. NBC News actually tweeted out that quote, calling our beloved sacred immigrants, non-documented immigrants, trash. And then once they realized that they revealed how they really feel, they deleted a few moments later. Now, not everyone on the left, we should tell you, is so intent on sending these migrants away. Novelist Jane Chittick, for example, offered this alternative, quote, I would love to see the Obamas open up their huge property and erect tents and look after all these people while they're being processed, she said. Well, actually, you know, we're always in search of the one decent liberal left in America. Maybe Jane Chittick is the one, because that's a pretty fair point. And Barack Obama has a long documented history of having people on his front lawn. In fact, he set up a tent city to house hundreds of people for, let's see, oh, himself, his own birthday party. So could he do that again? Of course. And he should, because to do anything less than that, Barack Obama himself told us, would essentially punish the people of Martha's Vineyard. Mistreating immigrants would rob them of what makes America a worthy country. Watch this. America is a nation of immigrants. Martha's Vineyard, where approximately 100% of people voted for him and loved him, even in Martha's Vineyard, he could not make the sale. He could not get people who actually lived there to agree with that. They did do one thing. They said that they go fund him, which they called an urgent plea. And they told us this was a way to help the migrants. And we're quoting, 
From the front, Martha's Vineyard is a community of open-hearted individuals that view these migrants as people, not political pawns, or trash. <laughs> However, continuing the quote, the island is a resort community with only 20,000 year-round residents, and it already faces a shortage of affordable housing and off-season jobs. Oh, it's just not rich enough. They don't have enough beds. It's one of the richest places in the United States, and it has more available beds than any other place, probably in North America right now. But it's just they can't swing it. But you can do your part by donating to the fund. By donating to the fund, How much of that money is going to the migrants? An update on the fundraiser reveals the funds will instead go toward the funding, building up a reserve to assist situations like this in the future, rather than directly helping this group of migrants in their situation. In other words, Martha's Vineyard is building itself an endowment, just like Harvard. That's amazing. An endowment for Martha's Vineyard, not to help anyone, but because why wouldn't Martha's Vineyard want an endowment? They give them a quick show, show, show. Well, yesterday, they requested Martha's Vineyard representatives. They broke it up. The governor of Massachusetts, thoroughly loathsome Charlie Baker, called up the National Guard. Charlie Baker, Mr. Compassion literally brought in the army to remove brown people from the whitest island of the Atlantic Ocean. So once the army brought them off Martha's Vineyard, they were sent to a military base on Cape Cod. A military base. How welcoming. <laughs> Cape Cod, by the way, is a lot more Republican than Martha's Vineyard, so let's send it to them. So here's the scene of the migrants being escorted out after less than 48 hours. And then truly see the So There's nothing we can do. The government sent them here. Oh, but Martha's Vineyard? Oh, they don't play. They bring in the army in a day and take them out like the garbage. So there's a lot of irony here, and we're going to try to unpack it as quickly and crisply as we can. But it was just a day ago that we were told that Ron DeSantis was a human trafficker. He was, in fact, comparable to Adolf Hitler, said Ken Burns, America's filmmaker, because he had organized the transportation of migrants from his state to Martha's Wow. This is so cool and, and so unnecessary, so uncalled for, and so brazen. Uh, it shocks the conscience of any fair minded human being. This
Chicago, Brownsville, what? See, I'm reporting there was pandemonium. This is the location. This is the one uh, homeless shelter they have on the entire island. There are five different towns here. St. Andrew's Parish House can usually handle 10. They've had to uh, increase the number to 50 uh, uh, immigrants who will be here after they were sort of unceremoniously dropped uh, off on planes, two different planes, uh, in Martha's Vineyard. Ooh, glasses are, are the glasses on TV people more complex than the players or something they would build among us just put in some perspective before we proceed. This is 50 people. 50 people. We've had 2 million people come here illegally. Where did they go? Well, they went to a couple of other state countries. The Biden administration flew them to change the demographics of America forever. That's just really sorry. And no one said a word. But 50 people? Justifiably fleeing oppression is absolutely bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre. You're a bigot if you're not into it. By the way, again, just for perspective, the one thing that should never be partisan is immigration policy. Because immigration policy is the one policy that's irreparable. It changes your country forever. So you should have a broad consensus about what you want your country to become before you tamper with the formula. But someone like Joe Biden, who is only partisan, that's it, doesn't care. By the way, what happened after Biden transported all these people around the country, hundreds and hundreds of thousands? Well, in one community in Florida, Florida, a community that can, quote, afford more legal migrants, a 24-year-old Honduran man ended up murdering a father in his own home. That was in Jacksonville. So that didn't get a ton of attention, but apparently people on Martha's Vineyard we're watching. They don't want that. And that's why the minute Biden's voters have to deal with Venezuela and seeking the American dream, they call in the National Guard to ship them to the military. I sanctuary state and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction and yes we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures yeah greener pastures aspen next and by the way every ivy league college all seven of them and then maybe you hit wesley and Bowdoin and stanford the places that support a ball above all other institutions in this country that support illegal immigration, that have more funding per capita than any other institution in the United States, are the richest places in America on college campuses, liberal arts college, elite liberal arts colleges. How many migrants and refugees are they taking? Zero. Let's hope the next stop is there. And let's also hope that the government of the same states are watching the government of Canada within 24 hours of having immigrants I'm dumped on the floor. People of the world. Why are you on the other side of the moon? 
shouldn't do that. This is the temple. The Texas, Arizona, Florida, etc. This is the exact same thing. Chapman Moore is the editor-in-chief of Outspoken, a contributing editor at The Spectator, who joins us tonight. Chapman, thanks so much for coming on. This, in some way, you know, it's easy to mock these people who are just, are, they're literally beyond parody. Um, and they lack all self-awareness, but they're also very effective. Like, they don't want the illegals in Martha's Vineyard, and they're just not going to have them. And the military took them out. What, what, what's the lesson? Oh, absolutely. And as somebody who knows this type of liberal quite well and spent virtually my whole 20s in the Cape and Islands area as a minimum wage seasonal worker, not as a rich person, I know these people very well. There's not a question in my mind that if this had been 50 white Ukrainians, they would have thrown together a parade. They probably already have the flags out. They would have been lining up to adopt them, host them in their guest bedrooms, uh, parade them around on social media. Looks like they're getting crazy. You need to be a real reality. You know? <laughs> they're fundamentally racist. Oh, they're actually trying to wait for these things. And now this is how they're going to get them. Because, you know, I like it. And they call us racist. We just see black people that are not true. And it doesn't come to us. But they don't like to call us racist. writing, and radicalism. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, let me just say as a mother, it is a minefield for parents out there. Now, too often the very people whom you're supposed to be able to trust to teach your sons and daughters are the ones you can trust the least. Like this lovely teacher, a woman named Amber Parker, who was just fired from Franklin High School in El Paso, Texas. Come on, forget math and science. Her message to students recently was, don't be mean to pedophiles.
gender identity in education. largest component of porn literacy. It's the ability for young people to analyze and ask questions about the media that they're viewing. Porn is meant to sexually excite a viewer and create fantasy, right? And it gets worse. They advocate cartoon porn. Wow, that's so big. I never knew it could be so huge. Hey, Jane, what are you looking at? And of course, then there's the handy tips to students about how to hide their porn viewing habits from parents. Is that part of the normal experience too? Welcome to Hannity Prime. Dr. Fauci confronted on Capitol Hill with the truth as he was grilled today by Senator Mike Pompeo. He will join us with a recap. Also tonight, Wisconsin Senate candidate Mandela Barnes was caught on camera trashing capitalism just after he called for violent criminals to be released from prison. First, the countdown continues. We are only 55 short days away from these pivotal midterm elections, and Democrats have lost all touch with reality. Now, yesterday, we showed you the new devastating economic numbers. Inflation went up. more expensive than ever. And now, by the way, to add insult to injury, Biden's incompetent transportation secretary, small town mayor, there's Mayor Pete right there, has been unable to hammer out a deal with America's railroad unions. So now, in the wake of a looming strike, many train lines are getting shut down and our supply chain problems are about to get that much worse. Even certain Amtrak routes have already been put on pause indefinitely. Joe, Amtrak Joe, do you care to comment? So naturally, none of this stopped the White House from throwing a massive celebration complete with the smiling and the fist bumps and the laughing and the patting on the back with Nancy Pelosi. They even had a live performance from James Taylor. And he serenaded the crowd with Fire and Rain. It's a great song, a song about drug addiction and suicide. Uh, perhaps uh, maybe appropriate in this, this sense, given Biden's fentanyl and opioid crisis because of his open borders policies. Now, a celebration patting themselves on the back on the day that Just inflation numbers morning, rose yet again for the previous gone. month. Can you really be that oblivious Suzanne, and that the plans out of they touch put with the American people? Because Americans are suffering. 
Now the president walked out this morning rage and I rose down this speech song. complete with weird, bizarre anger, yelling I just can't about remember who to send rescued it to. America's economy and fixed inflation. What in the world does he I've again? seen fire and I've seen rain. And by the way, this song with all the news networks featured live I've seen side sunny side days footage. that I thought that. would no never show the end. stock market crashing. Even fake news, I've CNN, seen MSDNC, lonely times when I could not find a friend. Joe Biden was spiking the football at the very moment. But I always thought that I'd see him wiped out in real time. Again. Joe's bizarre celebration didn't stop there. Today he visited the Detroit Auto Show. It's time to just show you. Also looked down Zero upon me, Jesus. You gotta help me make a stand. Laying off 3,000 employees to Just got to see me through another day. Electric vehicle transition. That didn't stop my Joe body's aching and my time is at hand. The and then bizarrely held hands I won't with the Michigan make it any uh, other Whitmer. way. But later, after a brief set of remarks, Joe oh, faced a serious challenge. I've seen fire, I've seen to rain. I've like seen sunny days so that I thought would never end. Joe, take a look. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you again Been walking my mind to Talk an easy time Joe Biden has My back turned towards the sun His vice president being one Lord knows when the cold wind blows uh, It'll turn your the head truth. around you decide. Well, there's hours of time on the telephone line To talk about things to come Sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you, baby. One more time again. Thought I'd see you one more time again. There's just a few things coming my way this time around now. Thought I'd see you. Thought I'd see you. Need to plug in the car because that represents 90% of our current electric grid. And even with the high price of gas, it would take at least a decade plus to maybe even break even. So Kamala's just flat out lying or just hasn't bothered to do simple math. So for the two thirds of the
Nobody wants you And you're looking For someone To hold your hand Someone Who will understand Button your lip and don't let the shield slip. Take a fresh grip on your bulletproof mask. And if they try to break down your disguise with their questions, can hide, hide, hide. Behind paranoid eyes. You put on your brave face and slip over the road for a job. Fixing your grin as you casually lean on the bar. Laughing too loud at the rest of the world with the boys in the crowd. You can hide, hide, hide.
you believed in their stories of fame, fortune, and glory. Now you're lost in a haze of alcohol, soft middle age. The pie in the sky turned out to be miles too high. You hide, hide, hide. minutes to reach their target. So do theirs, right? That's a warning, this is me. All confidence is high. I repeat, confidence is high. Right, we've got 32 targets in track and 10 impacting points. I want to confirm, is this an exercise? Roger, right, copy. This is not an exercise. Roger, Major Ryan, are we in the past attack? Am I really Charcoal to defend 